Um, so this is episode nine of the podcast, and we've got DJ Ben Singh in today. Um, how are you, mate? I'm all right. I'm all right. Busy, but keeping uh, keeping well. I see you've got the hoodie on with your name on it. Um, yeah, a bit sh- shameless uh, self advertising. <laughs> that makes sense now because I remember at Hellfire at Blackpool, I saw a guy with a massive inflatable banana holding it up. So is it? Is, is yeah, that... that's that's good old Barry. Okay, is he a fan of yours or a friend or both? Uh, right. So, long story short, Milton Keynes Bowl, Sweet South Mafia, Don't You Worry Child Day, that that whole shindig. Um, just before they came on, went to the toilet, went to the bar, come back in the crowd, could I find my mates? Nah. Yeah. So I started bringing a, an inflatable banana, and uh, he's just sort of stuck. Nice, no, nice. and um, I also saw you at Creamfields with the Where's Wally thing with all your friends on. Is is that is like that something you do at most events? You go dressed up, or is it just Creamfields? It's event? just uh, Creamfields Thursday. We always like our group do a, yeah. a fancy dress, so uh, that was that was this year's attempt. Yeah, and uh, how did you find Creamfields? It was my first one, and it was unbelievable, mate. Had it, it was, yeah, yeah. They they get better every year. A lot of people have got. Good things to say, bad things to say, but at the end of the day, did you have a good time? I did. Yeah. Um, that was my 13th, 13th year, because I lived like 10 minutes away, so it's sort of rude not to. Um, but yeah, no, as always, best best year yet. Um, and what, what who did you go and see there? Like, who would you say like your top five performances were? That you okay, went- I mean, that's hard because I, I, I've said this, I I literally couldn't say that I was disappointed by a single person I saw, but then equally, because of the clashes, there was people I didn't see that apparently were brilliant as well. So I don't regret seeing who I, who I saw, but um, there might be some some gaps in there that, that yeah. I would have liked to see as well. But um, number one's got to be hard. Well, it's not even a, a question. Yeah. I've been waiting for that for four years. And even though you've seen the live streams from elsewhere, being there is just different gravy. Yeah. Um, in no particular order, um, well, basically, I'm just going to reel off who I saw and then that's who I, I enjoyed. So, God, this is, I've slept since then quite heavily. <laughs> um, Vinnie Vici were decent. Uh, Marlo, I really enjoyed. That was a, a surprise for me. Scooter, I think, would probably be my number two after Hardwell. Um, again, they get bashed all the time. Dimitri is like Mike, but they came back with something big and and juicy. I, I yeah. didn't expect them to be that good. I thought if you're gonna get, you know what you're gonna get, and they, they exceeded what I thought. Mm-hmm. Um, other shouts, third party, unbelievable. Uh, Base Jack is decent, and oh god, I mean Ollie Ollie James. I've got to, I've got to yeah. give a shout out because he's <laughs> he's doing good things, and not a lot of people know who he is. So. Yeah, hopefully this is the year where he uh, finally starts getting the recognition he's deserved for like 10 years. He needs to come on a podcast. He keeps reading the messages. He says he's coming on. He needs to finally come on. Um, well, this, this, this is you calling him out, not me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's um, a busy, busy man. No, nah, I, I think like the people you've just mentioned there is most of the people I went to see. I mean, Hardwell will talk about his big room style of things. I know he's moved on from that, but Hardwell, yeah, probably number one because like you say, we've We've been waiting for that for years. And he was a DJ who got me all through school. Um, that was back when, obviously, United We Are album came out and he did yeah. the Hardwell on Airs every Friday. And that was like that was like Christmas every Friday. You'd, you know, back home from school and you'd wait till night time and you'd get that on. But, yeah, he's number one. I mean, Armour Van Buren, I think, number two. He's just, for me, I think he's the GOAT and he's my favourite. Scooter, that's mine and my dad's favourite. Hardcore band. Um, I thought Will Sparks blew the roof off. Oh, how could I forget Sparks? Yeah. yeah, he blew the roof off as well. Yeah. And then I, uh, Dematic, I, I never, I never knew of that guy. And same with Marlow as well. And my mate says you need to go and see him, and they were brilliant. But I'm going to stick Lost Frequencies in there on the Sunday because, like, I said to my friend, I said I just hope he doesn't go slow. And he started as he would, and then. He just turned it into this techno rave and like drum and bass was yeah, and it was like crazy. Amazing. I, I'm hoping to to catch 
recordings of some of the ones that I missed because I'm uh, yeah intrigued to to see like in your head you think I'm gonna go and see those people and then if you don't see them or sometimes you think oh, I'll I'll leave them I won't watch them and then you watch them and it's one of the best sets you've ever seen yeah. oh, <laughs> one of one of the three. <laughs> No, no. Um, I, I was surprised. I like David Getter as well. I think he was good. And the reason I like David Getter that time is because I hate him sometimes because he just talks a lot all set every single time. He's, he'll come out and be like, hello, Creamfields. And then every single time, like this year, he says he's been waiting for it for two years, even though he was there last year. And he just yeah, says, yeah, a bit weird time. on that. Yeah. But Mate, enough of that. Let's talk about yourself. Um, h- how did you get into DJing? Um, well, it sounds a lot. I can hear a lot of similarities with what you're saying about like Hargill and Air and all that. Um, I've always been into music, but not necessarily dance music. That happened probably around the time I was 17, 18. First Creamfields was 2009. That's when it really started. Um, I've been going to gigs for the last, well, 10, 11, 12 years, whatever the maths is. I'm not, not too, not too hot on that, but, um, I went to, I worked at Tomorrowland, um, not in any fancy role, just like a glorified bin person, but, uh, I wouldn't do it any other way now, but that was 2018. And that was when we were around the campsite. There was a couple of the other lads who I worked with who, who DJ as well. And they were like, why don't you just get yourself some decks? And I was like, I don't really, I've always wanted to do it, but I've never got around to it. And then COVID happened. Uh-huh. And it was like, it was meant to be the time where I sort of got stuck into that. So I did and things rolled quite, I've, I've got to this position very fortunately, very quickly being right place, right time. Yeah. Um, yeah, like you say, like, I, I'm going to put it in perspective like from when I do some DJing as well. I, I don't do it in the state like you do it. I've got my own decks upstairs, the the DG Days 200s, just what you put your iPad in and iPhone. And, but I, I just do it more in the sense of like house parties or stuff like that. And, you know, if you rock up to an house party, like cause I'm a uni student and you, you bring a deck to like a flight, it just... It's a bit different than someone with an orcs, but for me, that's where it all started. I would yeah. always be the person who ended up, might have been at three o'clock in the morning, it might have been as soon as we got there with the orcs. And I just, I just, you just know what music to play. It, do you have a similar experience to that? Was you always the DJ? Like, yeah, uh, yeah, no, again, that sounds like uh, bang on what, what happens to me. I've always been the one that has almost geeked out on music and watched all the sets and I know what all the new music is six months before it's released. Yeah. Um, And it's trying to, it's that having that passion for trying to introduce it to (laughs) your mates. Now I found out very quickly that my mates from back here really fucking hate EDM. (laughs) So what I can get away with playing with them is a lot different to now, like the the, the rave family that I've sort of adopted and and become a part of. If I'm ever doing a like pre-drinks or just a house party when there's not a gig on, it's a lot different. You know exactly what you yeah. what you can and can't get away with. Yeah, and no, my friends are sort of the same. Like, I'll get I'm trying to think of some of the songs I'll get. Some of the songs they like, to be fair. Like I'll get away with playing Week on One with Ben Nicky sometimes. And but then they'll they'll say like when well, the song's like that on, or I might have a bit of um, a bit of techno music. And they'll, they'll just say, Oh, can you put like Russ Million on or something, and I'm like, I can, but I do. I really want to go from that straight to that, and it's like, you know. But um, I, I mean, I saw you at Hellfire, and uh, I mean, you weren't you took over from Callum Higby's. Yeah. What 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 was what? How did that come about? I know he dropped out, but how, how did it feel for you to get the call up to it go? Was, on that it was all really, really uh, <laughs> a bit of a whirlwind. So. Bit of a backstory. I you probably saw me hopping about on stage yeah. at Tomorrowland when I was there, about 20 minutes from the end of Garrick's. I'm stood at the main stage on the hill, and uh it felt like someone had thrown a full can of summit at the back of my leg. My calf yeah. popped. So immediately I'm thinking, uh, I don't really want to pull out of this. Yeah, can I get away with it on one leg? What are they gonna think? I thought, ah oh, no, I'll just do it. I can't I can't pull away from such a big event. Yeah, yeah. 
I was due to be playing in the VIP room, so I'm all I'm literally set up USBs, press play, and they're like, oh, we've not let open yet. Turn it off. You're going to start again when we give you the nod. And then I think they were holding people back because they didn't actually realise that Kellen wasn't coming, even though he'd announced it um, on his socials. So I got a shout from the, the stage manager, Ben, I'm putting you on the main stage. And by the time I'd got up there, it was right, go. Yeah. yeah. And that was, yeah, literally yeah. As, as quick as that. <laughs> did, you, did you have everything set up already? So was it, it was just like you say, I mean... I just had to problem. unplug my USBs from VIP and oh, stick okay. them on the main stage. No, and I've seen pictures on your Instagram of that, and you'd think, you know, the main, the first act, you know, there's going to be 20, 30 people there, but it weren't. It was, uh, the, if I, I've put a photo on this video, but it was that pop tent sort of right in the middle, sort yeah, of, the back, weren't they? but, and it went past that, and then it was the bar. And for, for you to start and live that many people, that must have been a good feeling for you. It was it was amazing because one of the big worries, I mean, a lot of DJs would be, in, well, I've already heard, I, I listen to podcasts like this with the top DJs that I look up to. So a lot of DJs have this like complex that no one's going to come and see them. And um, obviously starting out at the, the stage I'm at in, in, in DJing, um, it's a, a really big worry for me because you just think, oh, well, I'm going to put all this work in. I'm going to have a good time, but it's always better when there's more people there. And to see it go from literally pressing play with zero people stood there mm -hmm. to however many hundred thousand, I, I've got absolutely no idea what the numbers were, but so quickly, by the end of my set, it was absolutely rammed. And, and the energy that I got from that, I gave back. And it was to play, like, it must have been amazing for you to play your own music as well, and like the music you like. You, you didn't have to play to the crowd as some DJs have to do, you know. I think, like, Ollie James, I think that's a perfect example. He played these big room stuff, but you could tell at, at Creamfields it was more sort of songs that people knew, do you know what I mean? So it, if he went out and started with the age of rave and old school and all them songs, you know, some of the, I don't think, I think we can agree, there might not have been as many people as he would have liked, but he, he put a spin on, you know, he played Sweetie Tars with Fear, I think, uh, you know, you, you get the gist of what I mean. So that, that must have been nice for you to play your own style of music. Yeah, yeah. I, <coughs> I always sort of lean towards, as the early days of Hardwell and, and the golden age of EDM 20, 12, 13, that sort of time. Um, that's always going to be embedded in me somewhere, but it's it's really nice to see the evolution of different different genres that are... So now we're moving towards this big room techno sound, you've got future rave going well, and then you still got rave culture with the, the, the old style big room. You've still got Nicky Romero's protocol smashing out the, the old school progressive stuff, uh, as well as some have revealed. So it's yeah, it's nice to see all those different avenues. And I know Ben Nick is very much like this. I wouldn't necessarily play, well, as I didn't, what you experienced, a whole set of, I'm playing hard, big tech mm -hmm. now. Like there was a lot of different genres in there, which are just all my favourites. So yeah, why, why be restricted to, because I thought Hellfire, Looking at the lineup, I thought it's going to be pretty hard. I might have to go a bit harder than normally. Yeah. And I found that being being on first, as I would have been in either VIP or main stage, it didn't really matter because it was just good fucking music. Yeah, yeah. No, that's exactly what me and my friend said because we're, we're both big, big room fans. He, he, you know, he's he's got his rave culture t-shirts and whatever. And we were surprised. I mean, you, you came out with Kevu, you came out with... Um, Axmo and people like that, and we were like, for, for, obviously we're big fans of that. So he was like, "Just for now, like it, like exactly what you said." The lineup you would not have expected that anymore, and we did not expect any big room to be played. So it, that was nice for us to hear. Um, but you said about um, some of the you, you I'm trying to find the words um, people you looked up to when you like you DJ. Who have you got a top three of? Top three, well, I'd or... say I'd say 
it's either a top <laughs> two or a top four, and there's a reason for that. So yeah. Hardwell and Swedish House Mafia. Uh-huh. Um, you could potentially make SHM Axwell and Grosso because I'd probably lean towards them a bit, well, a lot more with their sort of mashups. And you can see the influence that like Axel and Grosso had on SHM and then Steve did. Mm-hmm. Um, but they they were definitely like, I remember seeing SHM in a tent at Creamfields in 2009 or 10. And it was just bonkers that where they've come now. Uh-huh. No, I, I, and again, you get a lot of people sort of saying, oh, but they're, they're shit now. They're not what they were. No, they're not. They've evolved. And whether you agree with it or not, they still had a massive influence back then. Uh-huh. And they've still got bangers from back then. And they're still geniuses now, but they're putting music that they like to put together out. It's your choice whether you listen to it or not. Yeah. Uh, I presume you're going to... Are you seeing them this year? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Birmingham, 8th oh. October. Awesome. Um, I, I just want to speak about, obviously, the, the people that you've opened up for um, in like Hellfire and places like that. Like, that... Uh, I would be starstruck. What sort of feeling do you get to be able to share the stage with Ben Nicky, Scooter, Darren Styles? And what, what is that like for you? It's it's still a bit surreal, you know, because I've because I've I'm pretty new to this. I've done what two hellfires at Victoria Warehouse in room two, so you don't meet the room one DJs there um, necessarily, and then. Hellfire outside, obviously getting stuck on the main stage. I'm, I'm back. I, I went to the toilet, and Darren Styles is just chilling there, and it's just like have a nice little chat. And it's just there's still people. Yeah. People forget that they're not this weird god thing. Yeah. They're amazing DJs, but they're people, and they'll talk to you. Yeah. No, so, I, yeah, I, no, weird yeah. but nice. I saw Darren Styles in one of the most horrible nightclubs in Sheffield, Tank. I wouldn't recommend it, but I saw him. I was probably the first year of me turning 18, and I managed to get a photo of him, but that photo cannot be released for whatever reason. <laughs> uh, uh, I've got know. a few of them. Yeah, So, but that, that's my claim to fame. Um, but now, like you say, it's obviously nice. Like you say, they are, they are people. And um, uh, what, who would you say is the most famous DJ that you've been able to speak to? <clears throat> I mean, to be honest, I haven't met that many really, really big. I mean, the, the ones that really spring to mind are Darren. Um, I had a really good chat with Ollie at Hellfire and then again at Creamfields um, a couple of weeks ago. And third party boys, third party Crider, um, Matt Nash, Corey James. Uh-huh. But that was very brief. So, yeah, I've met, I've met a few, but not. Um, I've I've got a feeling it might sort of become a bit more frequent. So, um, after your after your set at Hellfire, did you did you go into the crowd or did you? Oh, you did. Oh, awesome. Yeah, I'm 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 just like one of you. Like I'm not uh, I'm nothing special. Um, uh-huh. I, I like what I do and I have good fun and other people seem to have good things to say as well. But um, yeah, at the end of the day, I got into it because I love being in the crowd. So I, I I don't want to change that as much as possible. Awesome. I mean, it was it did take a little bit longer to get to the toilet. Yeah, two <laughs> two minute walk took twenty minutes, but <laughs> all, all part of the fun. <coughs> it's it, this is a very very weird question I, I'm going to ask, but I only ask because I watched Ollie James's recent. It was a set. It was in an old warehouse. I can't remember. And he had like yeah, you know, the Slam FM one. one. Yeah, that's the one. Do you ever have to wear the right footwear on stage? Because I saw him slip quite a few times while he was bouncing. Is that, does that ever have to come into your mindset while you were about to go on? It's never been something that I've had to worry about up to now. Uh-huh. But obviously I had to think about footwear for uh, Hellfire being on one leg. Yeah. Um, and I, <laughs> I still I still laugh about the, the stage setup in terms of the fact that you, you have so many stage where they've got the big visual strip in front of your legs. Mm-hmm. So you only see from here upwards. <laughs> like It's absolutely typical that the one time I'm on one leg, you can see right through the decks. <laughs> <laughs> no. um, how did you like, 
learned to DJ? Did you follow like YouTube tutorials or did you just do it yourself? Yeah, well, yeah, no. <laughs> I, I, the internet's an amazing place. If you want to <laughs> learn how to do anything, even for free, you can. Yeah. Uh, and for a small cost, like I, I watched a lot of uh, YouTube. Phil Harris, Club Ready DJ School was another one. Crossfader and Digital DJ Tips. They're, yeah. they're probably the four that I'd recommend if you want to get into it and, and learn off your own back. It was literally a case of watch them, mess about on the decks. Sometimes I could get get on the decks at lunchtime on a Saturday if I had nothing to do and still be going at eight at night yeah. because I was just messing about. And the more times you do it, the more you learn that works, that doesn't work. Oh, that's how I do that. I'll keep practicing that. No. So it does It does become, I, I, I'd like to liken it to driving a car. At first yeah. you think, I've got to do all these things at the same time. Uh -huh. And now it's just second nature. What, what would you say is the biggest tip to anybody who wants to learn DJing? Um, it's going to sound really pathetic, but keep doing it. Practice. Uh -huh. Like you, you learn, it, it's, it's almost a bit of a cop out, but it's not because... I was told the same thing when I was first doing it. And I was like, oh, but I want a shiny answer. I want something that I can do something with. It mm -hmm. is literally a case of putting the hours and you get better. But the, the other thing I would say based on that, though, is if you are learning, record your, your practice sessions, listen back to them, and then you'll go, okay, that worked, that didn't work. And the more times you do that, that's probably the best practical tip I can offer. Yeah. Um, have you got any like sort of like what do you call them like cheats in terms of DJ and anything that makes it that little bit easier? Um, <coughs> well, it's not a cheat, but prep is massive. If you uh -huh. prepare, not necessarily preparing your set and going, I'm going to play this, then I'm going to play that. There's nothing wrong with doing. I know what I'm going to start with. I know what I'm going to end with. I might play these two together. But I don't like to plan a set because you don't know what mood you're in and what yeah, goes yeah. well and what doesn't go well until you're there. Um, but in terms of, it's really boring, but like if you've got your software, Serato, record box, whatever you use, if you prepare the new music that goes in there and make sure it's on bar, the speed's right, because sometimes it analyzes it wrong, uh, the key's right. And, and I use mixed in key and then input it from there. So it's a bit more accurate than it would be otherwise. But um, yeah, no, if, if you prepare it right, it will be right. Whereas you, you don't want to make mistakes. And if that is the fault of a song being analysed wrong yeah. and then it all goes out the window, it's just a, yeah, it's a bad time. Did, did... I've, I've been there before, but only like, yeah. at home or like yeah. at a house parks so it didn't really matter but it's a big lesson that like i do not want to be on that main stage or in the victoria mm -hmm. warehouse and something goes completely tits up because i've not done my prep no that's fair enough um do you do you ever um sort of when you're on stage do you ever like plan a set but halfway through you're like actually i want to play that one and then you you get it in have you ever have you, can you do that um, sort of um, you, you, like I said, if you do your prep right, you know what you're going to start with, maybe the first one, two, three songs. You know roughly what you're going to end with. And the middle can be a little bit more free-flowing. Um, but sometimes I'll be like, oh, I'm definitely playing that. Probably won't play that. And then I just think that there, there might be some something that happens, some song that's been played or something that just goes, do you know what? I really fancy playing that. Yeah. And you just do. And at the end of the day, the people in front of you, X amount are going to like it, X amount might not, and it might be 99% versus one or the other way around or whatever, but you you can only guess based on what you've you've already done or what you've already seen that night from other DJs, whether it's going to, going to go right or not. The other big thing, actually, that I'd add on to that is I, I owe a lot to my mates for coming and supporting me. Mm -hmm. If I know that one or two of them love this hardware song or they look like don't let daddy knows coming up will yeah. sparks was due to be there he's now not able to so i'm going to play some will sparks at some point yeah i know that people will be wanting that so it's yeah 
I suppose it's just a bit of intuition. Like you get a feeling like this this is going to go well. Yeah, yeah. Do, do you have any? You can change your mind, but yeah, no, hundred percent. Do you have any like go to songs that you play that you know get the crowd going? Uh, well, the big <coughs> one was was definitely not during COVID at house party. Um, I remember being in a kitchen with about thirty people, and I played yeah. Insomnia, and the, every there was conversations going on all over the place, and everything just stopped, and everyone just went mad. Yeah. So, but that being said, you've got certain, like you said, certain go-to ones that are so familiar that yeah. as soon as you hear it, people go, "Oh my god!" Um, obviously, Insomnia is one. I'd say like any any sort of acid, like fat bass, yeah, that sort of stuff. Everyone goes, oh, it's played. Like, <laughs> as soon as you've got that recognisable first bar or whatever, yeah. it, it, yeah. uh, your rhythmic sweet dreams. The number one. So uh, Levels is another one. Uh -huh. There's so many where you just think, they, they all, re it doesn't matter what version or what mashup I'm going to play, they know that song. Yeah. Uh, I, I think like, Insomnia, for me, that is the all-time like festival banger or I think for me like it's just it's just such a pump up song isn't it like yeah I, I just can't like it that song just gives you goosebumps all the time and it's yeah that is crazy and a song that I do like that's recently like Future Rave but also another flip's been done on it is Titanium which I know you played I the Future Rave one is brilliant but I like the BLN flip one that Ben Nicky plays quite a bit and yeah I mean, like my, my friends don't remotely like hard type of music but I can play that and it, it goes off sort of thing so um just we, we're coming to an end mate but I, I just want to have a bit of fun towards the end I want you to create a festival and I want you to have we'll, we'll go Friday Saturday Sunday I want you to have three major headlinings and then two supporting headlines on each day. Who are you going okay, for? This is a lot of DJs and it's going to be hard, <laughs> quick. I'm rubbish with quick decisions, but yeah. um, obviously I'd close, I'd, I mean, I'd close with Hardwell. Yeah. Saturday night, bit controversial headline with Axel and Grosso uh -huh. rather than SHM. Um, oh God. There's so many, and I'm going to miss people out. I mean, after Creamfields, I'd put Scooter back in there. I, yeah. I wouldn't have ever really thought about that. Um, Sparks, you'd have to be in there somewhere. Third party, uh, more people need to know. Like, they've got so... It's not like one or two hit wonders. They've got so yeah. many good songs. And uh -huh. you mention it to one of your normal friends who listen to the radio yeah. not, not got a clue yeah. um, so I think that's definitely another well it's definitely another in Ollie I'd put in uh -huh. because I think he's up and coming and he deserves to be in there W&W &W. yeah and I'm <laughs> get her at the moment and I'm I'd say with Morton, because I've not seen them together, but I know yeah. obviously they've both done a lot of work together recently and they've done the, the future raves at uh, Ushuaia. Something else just popped in my head. Oh yeah, the old Nicky Romero. Uh -huh. So I feel like he's gone very sort of dark and tech house and stuff now, but the old really super progressive Nicky from 2013 to 2016 or whatever, yeah. or even 17, Definitely him. Awesome. Um, so, sorry, that was absolutely no structure no. at all. I just threw a load <laughs> of names in, but yeah, I, I'd love a festival with all of those in one place. I'd I'd have to sit down with me with me notepad and yeah. work out what day to put who on because I'm <laughs> dead weird like that. I'm trying to think. I, I'd say Hardwell as well. He's he's bang on. Scooter. Armin Van Buren, I'd get in there. Oh, of course. Armin, yeah. DVLM, I, I, yeah. again, <laughs> I would have done. Then recently, maybe not so much. But then that that yeah. last set really, like, put them back into my good books. 
And uh, like you say, when you think on top of your head, I put you in a position there, but I, there's just too many people that I do. And then you, you've got Alesso. Again, <coughs> I feel like he's going quite groovy in tech house. Yeah. But the old school uh, years calling that under control, Alesso. Wow. Again, yeah. like, how can you get better than that? Uh-huh. No, it doesn't. Um, but now it's has been episode uh, nine uh, with Ben Singh. Um, thank you again for coming on, mate. Um, Pleasure, I, mate. And I'm sure we'll, we'll see. I'll see you at um, an event soon. Um, but now, thank you very much.